Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about romance books that have a road trip in them. Baby, baby. Now, this is one of those recommendation videos that I have where I actually don't like the trope. I do not like road trip romances. I don't know why, especially in contemporary settings, contemporary setting road trip romances, I hate them. I don't know why like it like it's cringy and just boring to me at the same time i more so love them in fantasy books so there are fantasy romance books on here but there are a few contemporary ones that i actually did enjoy that have the road trip aspect in them but the majority of the time if someone says this is a road trip romance and it's a recommendation it's way 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 on the back burner for me unfortunately i don't know why it's just one of those tropes that i have never really enjoyed in a contemporary setting that is give it to me with a historical and a fantasy all day long contemporary ones i don't know why but no <laughs> but there are a few on here that are contemporary i have i have two <laughs> two that are contemporary we have a few historicals and we also have some fantasy romances the majority of them are fantasies so my first contemporary one is on the way to you by candy steiner our heroine in here has been dying for years to go to college university up in washington state but she has not collected enough money or saved up enough money to go there she's working at a restaurant one day trying to save up you know get some money in and one of the customers comes up and is talking about his trip that he's going on he's actually driving all the way to washington state and she's like, oh my gosh, that is so cool. That's where I want to go. And he's like, no way. Do you want to come with me? I'll drive you right now to go to Washington. And she's like, oh, no, no, no. That's weird. I don't know you, whatever. And then she starts to think about it. And it's like, this may be my only opportunity to get this ride because I'm not paying for it. So she agrees and she packs up her stuff and her dog and travels all the way to Washington with the hero. However, there are a bunch of other things going on. The hero is dealing with some mental health stuff that plays some role into the book. And then our heroine is also an amputee. So there's that representation and she uses a prosthetic on one of her legs or one of her legs is a prosthetic, my apologies. And I loved the discussion of that in this book. Like, her discussion about her disability, I really related to and really felt. So I love that discussion here by Candy Steiner. This one didn't bother me all that much when it came to the road trip aspect. That definitely was not my favorite part of the book, but I liked other things in here. And this one is very emotional, made me cry. So take with that what you will. And the other contemporary one is actually a very nostalgic one for me. It's one of my first adult romance books that I ever read. This is The Edge of Never by J.A. Radmirsky. Would I recommend this to somebody who is a seasoned romance reader? Possibly not, but if you're new to the genre or if you just love road trip romances and haven't read this book yet, here you go. But this is definitely a new adult book, new adult romance, a lot of new adult language, and it can be quite cringy at times. But you know what? That's what happens with a lot of older noodle romances. This was written in 2012. So so Cameron, I believe she is 21, if I'm not mistaken. She decides to change her life around. She's going to pack up all of her belongings and just get on a Greyhound bus and see where it takes her. And there she ends up meeting the hero of the story, Andrew, who is on the Greyhound bus with her. And they kind of travel through the country with each other trying not to fall in love and you realize when you read the book why they're trying not to fall in love with each other and why that is so hard for them <laughs> andrew is kind of a daredevil and a rule breaker whereas cameron is not and so andrew kind of shows her how to step out of her comfort zone and experience new things in life that are exciting this one just gives me a lot of nostalgia because it is uh, one of the first books that i read for the romance adult genre technically new adult but you know what i mean i actually did like the road trip aspect in here i think it's because the two of them were using different modes of transportation all the time like they weren't stuck on this greyhound bus the entire time they were using a car they were walking they were taking breaks at places like i thought it was fun like this one is like the only one in a contemporary setting that i think i really enjoyed the road trip aspect next are historical romances these can be so fun especially when 
two characters are on a road trip and they're stuck in a carriage together or something like that. It, the angst, the tension is just so good in a historical when it comes to road trip romances. First is obviously A Week to Be Wicked by Tessa Dare, the second book in the Spindle Cove series. The heroine in here is Minerva. She loves, I believe, archaeology anthropology. Anyway, she's trying to study like fossils. She really wants to go to this fossil convention convention up in Scotland. However, she is a single woman. Her mother is not going to go travel with her to this convention. She's also a woman and the people in this convention don't accept women. It's a men only club. One of the men who lives in Spindle Cove with her, his name is Colin, who is a giant rake. She tries to convince him to like help her get there, travel along with her. And with much persuading, he agrees to do that. However, uh, Colin was, I believe, in a carriage accident when he was younger with his parents. I believe his parents unfortunately died from it. And so he has a large fear of being inside of a carriage and so they have to come up with unique ways to travel across England and Scotland. And there's a sharing one bed, they're stuck in an inn. There's a lot of fun scheminess in this book. The banter between these two in this book is amazing as well. I just, I love this book. Next is Dearest Rogue by Elizabeth Hoyt. This one, the road trip aspect isn't like a majority of the book, but it is a large chunk. This is the romance between Lady Phoebe and her bodyguard, James Trevelyan. Phoebe is the sister to a duke and her brother ends up hiring James to be her bodyguard because she is visually impaired. She's blind and back then there were not the same um, degree as like, of accessibility as we do nowadays, even though that's not the best. Anyway, she would not have the best time trying to get around in society all by herself because of her inability to see. So she has James there to kind of guide her. There is an age gap between the two, but James can't help but completely fall head over heels in love with Phoebe like the moment that he sees her and he would never admit his feelings because he's way older than her and he believes that she deserves better than him because he was also injured in war. And so he walks with a limp and I believe uses a cane as well. And Phoebe takes a little bit more time to get used to the idea of James being in her life because she really wants to be as independent as possible. But then she slowly starts to fall in love with James. The road trip aspect in here is when Phoebe and James are traveling to his family's house for a reason you read about in the book. They go to his family's house and they travel back and they have to be in a carriage together through the most of it and it was a really good part in the book. <laughs> I absolutely love James and Phoebe. They're one of my favorite couples of all time. You need to read this one. The last historical I have to mention is Devil in a Winter by Lisa Kleypas. This is book three in the Wallflower series and just like um, the previous book, Dearest Rogue, this road trip aspect is not the majority of the book, but it is a chunk of it. This is the romance between Evie and Sebastian. Sebastian has been kind of a villain in one of the previous books in this series. He is in need of marrying a woman with a lot of money because he's going into debt. Now, Evie is trying to escape an arranged marriage with a gross dude, and so she comes up with a proposition to marry Sebastian so she can escape that life and he can just get her money. And he agrees, and they go on a road trip to Gretna Green to get married. The road trip aspect in here was beautiful because it's like one of the first scenes you get to read about about Evie and Sebastian like being together because they have to travel there and then travel back in the carriage alone and man does he he takes care of Phoebe even though in the previous books you saw him be this like villainous character the way that he cared for Phoebe in this scene was beautiful like she's like freezing cold so he gets like a hot brick like every time they travel to put under her feet because her feet are so cold and it's so cute. I love this one. It's one of my favorites in this series. You need to check it out. All the rest of the books are fantasy romances and I love like all of these. First we have The Orcs Bride by Lala Fay. This is an orc fantasy monster romance. The heroine in here, Una, she is a human woman in a land that is basically overrun by orcs. Una does not like orcs. <laughs> they killed her entire family and so she's not very happy that she has to be one of basically the serving wenches to orcs who win battles in her land. Um, and so she's doing just that. She's serving them and some of them are being very crude, trying to grope her and stuff. And she's standing up to them. And the general, so like the leader of all of the soldiers here, notices this. His name's Ergen. And he's like, hmm, I like that human woman. Look at her standing up to these guys. Ergen has some own issues himself that he's dealing with. The emperor of all the orcs really wants Ergen to marry his daughter. He does not like said daughter. So he's trying to come up with a way that he can get married before he goes back to the kingdom. So he doesn't have to marry that orc lady. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to kidnap this human woman, take her with me while we travel to the kingdom. And on the way there, I'm gonna try to convince her to marry me. So <laughs> he does just that. He takes Una, he's like, you're coming with me. 
And um, on our journey, I'm gonna try and convince you to marry me. This one is so good. If you love orc romances and haven't read this one yet, please do. Next is the Midwinter Mail Order Bride by Katie Wilde. So our heroine in here is a princess, Princess Anya, and she is kind of scared because she has been sent to be the bride of Kale the Conqueror, who is a barbarian who's been known to kill a lot of people. However, she has some ulterior motives. She says she's gonna marry him, but she's actually gonna kill him so she can gain his kingdom. But she gets, I think, drugged accidentally on her journey there. And when she sees him, she kind of like spills the beans and is like, I'm just marrying you to kill you, blah, blah, blah. I don't actually like you. And Kayla's like, uh, no, then you're gonna go back home because I want a woman to love me for me. He looks like a barbarian on the outside, but you know what? He's a total softie on the inside who just wants a woman to love him for who he is, you know? And so it's about him taking Anya back to, their, back to her kingdom. So them traveling back and on the way back, they end up getting into some shenanigans, having some enemies, and then falling in love with each other. I love this one. This one's only 185 pages. It's a novella that's fairly short that is just so entertaining and swoony. Well, if you want a chunker, a chunker fantasy romance, I have Bounce the Battle God by Ruby Dixon. This series is so fun, okay? So this is Ruby Dixon's fantasy romance series where human women from our land have been sucked through a portal into this fantasy world. So Faith in here is one of the human women who've been sucked from our world and gets plopped put in this fantasy land. She's like, what the heck is going on? And by some means, she ends up becoming an anchor to one of the gods of this land. So like Greek mythology, you know, where there's like, I think it's a Greek or Roman. Oh gosh. Anyway, like our mythology, you have gods and goddesses, like Zeus is the father of all the gods. In this fantasy world, it's very similar. You have the father of all the gods and he has many children and his children are not behaving well. So he casts them all to the moral realm. Aaron the Cleaver, who is, I believe the battle god. Yes, battle god, you can tell by the title, duh Avery. Ba the battle god Aaron, gets cast down and in order for a god to like survive on the mortal realm it has to be anchored to a human who lives on the realm so faith ends up being that human and they have to travel across this fantasy world in order to get Aaron back up back up in the sky and for faith to go back home so they both have reasons for going on this trek together this one is a great slow burn romance uh so good. Next is Dragon Unleashed by Grace Draven. This is the second book in the Fallen Empire series. I just adore Grace Draven. She can do no wrong. Her fantasy world and the way that she writes is beautiful. This is one of my favorites from her. This is about Halani and Malachis. Halani lives in this like group of people who is like traveling everywhere like a band of travelers and they have wagons that they live in and they just travel around the land and she's also a witch which is a secret because the empire is not supposed to know this since they outlawed witchcraft she's a healer though so she's like a healing witch so people come to her to get healed and stuff in secret she comes across malachis in one of the mar many market days that they're selling their products at because they they buy and trade things in their little little camp of people. Um, she comes across Malachis who standing up for her mother. Her mother is different from people. She has the brain of basically a seven-year-old child and a lot of people make fun of her for it and try to abuse her for it. And Halani has been taking care of her mother for years. And then Malachis just shows her mother some kindness and she cannot forget about him. And then one of the last days they're at the market, she comes across Malachis almost dead, I believe with like arrows on his body. And so she takes care of him, brings him to her camp, into her wagon to take care of him. And so then he travels along with them with their journey across the land. However, Malachis has some own things going on with him. He may or may not be a dragon shifter looking for an item that will help him gain access to his shifting abilities. But he's finding it very hard to leave Halani to go find this object because he's falling in love with her. This book is just so... Good. Read book one though first because like read about side characters in there that you need to know about in book two. So please read book one also. And the last one that I'd love to mention is another Grace Draven. This is The Ippos King, the third book in the Wraith King series. This is the romance between um, Saravek and Anuzet. You need to read the main books in this series before you get to this one, um, which is Radiance, obviously my favorite romance of all time. So this is the third book in the series. And this is about Saravek and Anuzet going to find 
something, okay? They're going on a trek together. They're both reluctant to traveling together because they're both so attracted and into the other person, but they don't want to like admit their feelings. Saravek will. Saravek is falling like hardcore for Anaset. He's just waiting for her to finally freaking accept him. <laughs> He's falling hard for this Kai woman. And she just like is finding it so hard to let someone love her because she's been through a lot in her life, a lot of trauma. So I just, I love this one, Anaset and Saravek beautiful. I can't really talk about this one that much because it stems from book one and book two and I don't want to spoil those for you if you haven't read them yet. So I love this one and their trek across this fantasy world was great. Anyways, there you have it. Those are 10 romance recommendations for you that have a road trip in them. Please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you have any recommendations for me, please leave them to be historical or fantasy because I'm not really a contemporary girly with this trope. So please be aware of that. But if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me any transportation device device. Is that a right word? Transportation mode. I don't know, a bus, a car, a train, whatever. You know what I mean. Anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.